Well, as you can see, I've got my energy back up to 100%. So, I took out one of my sleeps, put in an extra study, because we still want to get our grades up. But otherwise, our stats are still okay, I think. I should actually check. Okay, they haven't changed, so that's good. So, uh, let's see what this week brings, because last week was so exciting. Time for breakfast. I mean, lunch. <laughs> Going to bed, classroom, a quick four-hour nap, an event. <clears throat> I've barely got the door open when I hear the yelling from upstairs. Well, what did you expect was going to happen? You know the rules, Sally. Oh no, did you find out about Vegemite? No. Oh crap, I hope this isn't what I think it is. Come on, Dominic! Maybe I should get up there. Sally's going to need backup. Definitely, go. I close the door behind me and run upstairs. It, seems, it looks like everyone else was home too, as they're all watching the scene in the hall. Oh. Dominic is yelling at poor Sally while she clings to Vegemite. No, Sally, you know the rules. I walked you through them just like I walked everyone else through them. No pets allowed. It's rule number two for crying out loud. Oh yeah, because we've never broken a rule before. That's not helping your case, Sally. So what? You're just going to kick me out of the house? Because I didn't want to see a poor puppy freeze on the street? One way or another, that dog is leaving this house, Sally. If you want to go with him, I'm not going to stop you. Hello, everyone. Don't you think that might be a bit harsh, Dominic? Both Sally and Dominic seem surprised to see me standing at the top of the stairs. Stay out of this, Anne. This is a violation, and I have to deal with this as Latin House is RA. By now, Sally is just flat out crying. The others leave their rooms. Isabella gives me a nod hello, then leans over toward my ear. Poor Sally. Dominic came home early and caught her bringing Vegemite back in from his walk. No way to back out of it now. I nod to Isabella as Dominic continues to chew out Sally. Can't believe you'd be so irresponsible. Not to mention so inconsiderate to your fellow housemates. Did you ever take their feelings into account when you decided to bring that dog here? What if they were allergic? Actually, I'm not allergic at all. Anybody else? Everyone else shakes their head while Dominic frowns. Regardless, what about the mess, hmm? Or the disturbance to your studying? I don't think Vegemite's ever disturbed my studying. You guys? We all shake our heads now. Dominic, you're fighting a losing battle here. I know what you're trying to do here, and it's not going to work, damn it. She broke the rule. The dog's gotta go. Oh, please, Dushinik. We all know you'll never report this infraction. You don't want the mark on your record. Ha, huh, so true. You two delinquent, shut it. I know you knew about this violation and didn't report it, so don't think you're not on my watch list. Sally's actually a very responsible pet owner, Dominic. Don't you... Don't you feel you're being a bit hard on her? You too, Anne. Really? I can't believe you'd betray me. I'm not betraying anyone. I just think you might be going too far. I'm sorry, but these are the rules. What am I supposed to tell the housing committee? Oh, sorry. I thought that rule was just a suggestion. I do not believe it is strictly necessary that you inform the housing committee. He's right. Nobody says you have to tell them. They're right. You can just keep this under wraps, you know. It's not like we're going to go blabbing about it. I'm not going to threaten to leave if the puppy goes. Please, Dominic. For, for old time's sake. For us, please. I can't just let Sally's poor puppy get taken away. Everyone loves Vegemite. I just have to make Dominic see reason. Dominic, can... Can I talk to you over here for a second? Anne, I have to deal with this. Well, this is what I want to discuss with you. Please. Dominic looks rather exasperated, but nods. Dominic and I walk down the stairs a bit while the others all gather around Sally to offer her comfort. Anne, I can't let our relationship affect my ability to do my job. It's my job to enforce the rules, Anne. I know, Dominic, I know. But you've put yourself into a rather awkward position. Look, I know you don't want to be the villain here. But I will if I have to be. 
It's my duty. But I think what you don't want to be is a hypocrite. A hypocrite? How? I'm just saying, you've been very lax with enforcing rules to date, Dominic. We've had alcohol on the premises, late night parties, noise violations, you name it. That's not an excuse, and it's not a reason to keep breaking them. It just... Well, it just shows that you've been picking and choosing how you enforce the rules. I don't think you can go back to all of a sudden enforcing all of the rules now. You'd have to kick everyone out by the end of the week. Dominic appears to be considering the ramifications. Anne is so smart. What's more, I doubt you've told the Housing Authority about all our other transgressions. Keep this thing to yourself, and rather than being the villain again, you might get to be the hero. Besides, you don't actually want to kick that puppy out, do you? You're not that cruel, are you? Yeah, you make some good points, Anne. Don't think I didn't notice you trying to flirt your way out of it, though. You don't get to be just be beautiful at all of your problems, you know. Dominic leans over and kisses me a quick peck on the lips. Dominic turns and we both head back upstairs. Everyone is standing around Sally and goes quiet, looking at Dominic expectantly. Yeah, fine, the puppy can stay. <laughs> and somehow we got points with him for that. Yay! Everyone but Dominic lets out a cheer at that. Except Isabella doesn't look all that happy, but oh well. I mean, I don't need a college education. When they kick me out, I'm sure I'll find a very nice bridge to die under. Oh, stop being such a drama queen. <laughs> we all laugh as Sally puts Vegemite down on the carpet and finally lets him explore the house as freely as he wants. Yay, Vegemite. That's good. Doing all the studying. Taking a nap. Another event. Oh, Thanks for keeping an eye on him, Anne. No problem, Sally. He's too cute to say no to. Just as Sally leaves, I hear a knock at the front door. I've got it. Oh, Carmen. Hey, what's up? Hey, Anne. I scored tickets for the big battle of the bands tonight. You want to go with? Uh... I've got energy, I guess. Sure, Carmen. You know what? That actually sounds like a lot of fun. Thanks, Car Car. <laughs> car Car. Of course, Annie Bell. This is going to be so much fun. Let's head out. I really couldn't tell you when we started using those nicknames, but Carmen's the only one I let get away with using such a silly nickname for me. Sometimes I think the only reason we even use them is because we know they annoy the elder. <laughs> Have you eaten? I'm starving. We hang out a bit, deciding where we want to go for food before the big event. A few hours later, and we're standing together at the head of the line, handing our tickets over to the doorman. Inside the room's been set up with a sort of stage area behind some curtains. It's a fairly amateur setup, but I think that might be the point. As soon as we get inside, Max made a beeline for the sign-ups table. I was actually a bit surprised they were still accepting sign-ups. I wasn't surprised that Max was here, though. Apparently it's a bit like an open mic. They wanted it to feel like anyone could challenge, so... Eh. He shrugs nonchalantly as he signs in his own band. Wait, don't you need Memphis and the others here? Oh, they're out back. I'll sneak them in during setup. You really are a terrible cheat, you know that? Who's cheating? They want to find the best band. I'm going to bring it to them. Seriously, you're awful. Well, I at least hope there's some good competition for you. Ah, me too. Any star can shine in the dark. It's the ones that shine in a bright sky that you really gotta watch. Is that one of your lyrics? Anyway, let's get up to the front. We push our way through to the front of the crowd, waiting for the show to start. Suddenly, the lights went down and we all looked to the front of the room. Oh no. Chad, what is Chad doing here? Welcome, ladies and germs, to tonight's big battle of the bands. I hope you're all ready to rock. What the hell is he doing up there? Crap, this could be bad. You've already signed up, so there's no going back now. Let's just enjoy ourselves while we can. Max looks at me and smiles, nodding genially. Chad introduces the bands as they come up. Most of them are alright, though Max keeps rolling his eyes at their songs. 
I elbow him a couple times, but overall we have a fun time. He even grabs me to dance for a few numbers. It's all very fun. Once he stops being a snob, Max is actually very sweet to me. He even keeps his eyes on me the whole time, even with all the other pretty girls around. Then again, maybe I spoke too soon. As we're dancing, I see his eyes go over my shoulder and a wolfish grin cross his face. Well, aren't I a lucky guy? <laughs> I'll say. Hey, cutie. I grin at Isabella in relief, mostly glad it's someone we both know. Actually, this is perfect timing. I think I remember these guys from the sign-up sheet, which means I need to get backstage. Take over for me? <laughs> you got it, Chief. I'll leave a virtue mostly intact for you. Mostly. Just take pictures. <laughs> Smack him playfully on the shoulder as he grins and runs off. So how did Chad end up hosting this thing anyway? Oh, one of the other student council members got sick. We both watch as Chad approaches the mic to introduce the final band. We grin at each other, realizing that we know what Max is about to do. Woo, yeah, pa people party it up. All right, we've got one last band, so I hope they can bring as much noise as our previous ones. Please welcome to the stage, uh, Back Alley Flash. As Max approaches the stage, a glimmer of recognition flashes across Chad's face, followed almost immediately by a glower. Max had better wow this crowd if he hopes to overcome the obvious judge bias. Before Chad can say anything else, Max snatches the mic away from him. All right, people, I hope you've got some gas left in the tank, because we brought the matches. What say we set this night on fire? <laughs> Everyone cheers, and Max's band bursts into their set. Their music is great, as always, and the whole crowd is jumping and dancing along. Isabella grabs me and we bump and jump for a while right along with everyone else in the excited crowd. Where's Carmen? Anyway, I thought we went with Carmen. A few songs later and the whole band takes a, takes a giant bow. The curtains close and we can hear the, the sound of the equipment being cleared off. Everyone else in the crowd starts chanting, Encore! Encore! Over and over while they're cleaning up. Finally, with the stage clear, Chad comes to the front of the stage and looks out over the crowd. I guess we can tell who got the popular vote. Unfortunately, by judge's decision, I'm afraid that Back Alley Flash is going to have to be disqualified. It's heartening to hear the crowd booing Chad. Boo! Look, I'm sorry, but we have it on authority that Back Alley Flash is a professional band under our rules. Boo! Despite the crowd booing again, it seems Chad's not going to budge. Pfft. Rally the crowd for Max. <laughs> I finally got some points with Max. I push my way through the crowd, trying to get right up to the stage. Chad and Max are arguing a bit, but the mic is off, so I can't really hear them. I try to yell at Chad, but I don't know if he can hear me. This isn't fair! They were clearly the best band here tonight. I guess he could hear me, because Chad turns his attention in my direction. See? That's not the point. The point is that they broke the rules of competition. Oh, please. They've barely had any gigs. They're good, but they're not professional. I don't remember you getting elected to the committee, mouse girl. What did he call me? I furrow my brows and turn myself toward the crowd. Wasn't Back Alley Flash the best band tonight? Yay. A few of the people around me nod and a few cheer, causing a ripple of cheers to go through the crowd. I start chanting the band's name over and over. Soon the crowd has picked up my chant and we're all crying out for Back Alley Flash. Back Alley Flash! Back Alley Flash! Max looks pretty smug up there, but I still feel good about helping him. <laughs> Chad looks annoyed as he looks out over the audience. Finally, as the chant reaches a crescendo, he throws his hands up. Fine. Whatever. You want to cheat poor up-and-comers for this sleazeball? Whatever. There's a bit of laughter over his announcement, but mostly everyone's busy clapping. <coughs> Woo! The back alley flash chant quickly fades from simply calling their name to calling for an encore. Max takes the mic again and launches into a new song for the crowd. For my part, I can't believe I just let a crowd in a chant. I don't know what came over me. But that's for later. For now, I'm just having too much fun. Yay, fun. Learning stuff. Sleeping in. 
All right, checkmate. Bam. Hey, Roxanne. Gonna go to sleep. That was one week. I think I should do another. Why not? Time for lunch. And an event. Oh, hi, Rakesh. Come on, Anne. I want you to see this. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I chuckle as we move through the trees. Rakesh just looks so excited. I guess it's rubbing off. Rakesh had come to get me almost the second I'd left class. It was about time for lunch, though, so I had an hour or so. Just a second. I just want to save. Because I finished the week. Okay, there we go. He led me to the park without saying much else, just that he was happy I was free for a bit. Finally, we hit a clearing, and I watched him spread his arms very theatrically. On the ground is a rather elaborate and incredibly put-together picnic lunch. Holy cow, you set all this up? Well, I may have purchased a few of the things in the basket, but otherwise... Crap! I wish you told me, Rakesh. I already made plans for lunch to study with Roxanne. Rakesh's face falls terribly. I feel really bad, but this was such a surprise. I understand, Anne. I'm so sorry. Really. It's okay. Go on, I do not wish to interrupt your plans. I just wanted your opinion on the setup anyway. Oh, well, if that's all, this is incredible, Rakesh. You've done a fantastic job. I wave goodbye as I make my way back to the campus. Rakesh seems pleased at my praise. <laughs> Sorry, Rakesh. I had plans. Oh, dear. I think we're getting off to a rough start. What? You better not have said what I think you just said. I was trying to get an early night, but Isabella's screaming snapped me awake. Last I remember, she was supposed to be hanging out with Chad tonight. I guess their date went pretty well. Hmm. I hope Chad didn't say anything too terrible. I may not like him, but he's her boyfriend. A quick look at my clock shows it's pretty late. I wonder if I should see what's going on. Isabella's calmed down a little bit, so I can't really make out what they're saying from here. Eh, I think I'll just skip this one. <laughs> then again, it would feel a lot like snooping on her personal business. I should probably leave them alone to work out their issues. I put my head back down and tried to cover my ears with a pillow. A few minutes later, I could hear a thumping noise as somebody large went down the stairs and out the door. After that, things were quiet again and I could get back to sleep. The next morning, I ran into Isabella at the dining room table, slowly eating breakfast. She looked awful, like she'd been crying all night. Oh my goodness, she look, does look terrible. Are... are you okay? It's fine, Anne. Are things okay with Chad? I'll thank you not to mention the name of that asshole again. I quickly throw out my hands defensively and back away into the kitchen. I guess things didn't go so great last night after all. Poor Isabella. I hope she'll be okay. Sorry, Isabella. Don't know what went on there, but... Eee. Zzzz. <laughs> Trying to flip the table again. Ah. An event. Everyone's covered in green today. Heck, everything is. Except me, but that's okay. The day is pretty fun, but I've never really understood the major appeal. I mean, it's basically just an excuse to get plastered, right? St. <laughs> Patty's Day. Though to be fair... Half of my college experience so far has been people making excuses to get plastered, so maybe it's not so bad. Still, I don't think I'm interested in going all out. I thought about putting on a green ribbon or something, just so I didn't stick out, but decided against it at the last minute. At any rate, I'm sure the folks at Latin House are planning some kind of big blowout bash, regardless of Dominic's desires, of course. I've been in my room the last few hours, wondering if I want to try to sneak out before it gets started. Ow. Play the event. Hold on a second. I'm like chewing on my mic here. Here we go. Play the event. I consider heading to the, to the library, but I don't want to be out on the streets with all the drunks around. That's a good point. At least around here, the drunks shouldn't be behind a wheel. <laughs> I spend the next hour or so during, doing the last of my schoolwork. 
I'm sure I won't be getting a lot of it done the next few days. For any number of reasons. And I have to admit, it might be nice to be silly with my friends for the night without worrying about unfinished schoolwork. There you go. When I hear the knock on my door, I'm ready for whatever the night holds. Oh, hey, Rikesh. Hey, Anne. Isabella says she's got a whole slew of games for us tonight. So you should get your ass in gear before I drink all the good booze. <laughs> Given how mopey Isabella's been since she broke up with Chad, I'm surprised she's this invested in St. Patrick's Day. Maybe she's just using the party as an excuse to get over her ex-boyfriend. Maybe. <laughs> nice music. Anyway, I follow Rakesh down the stairs where I see that the crew has been busy. There are cards laid out, green beer, and some kind of green punch in a giant bowl. Um, is that punch okay to drink, Isabella? It'll put hair on your chest. Then knock those hairs out and grow all new, stronger super hairs. <laughs> um, I don't know if I want that. Max got to the punch ahead of me, and I'm pretty sure he's spiking an alcoholic drink. Also, I think there's steam coming out of that flask. Why is there steam coming out of that flask? <laughs> All this talk about drinks is making me thirsty. Ah, oh, there we go. Isabella just smiles, missing Max's interference entirely. She blithely fills a cup and hands it to me. I eye the drink suspiciously, giving it a test sniff. I immediately regret it, reeling back as I feel my nose hair is burning off. <laughs> what is in this? Where's Dominic? I'm surprised he let you get away with this. Isabella just grins and points over to the study nook. Sitting there, tied at the wrists and ankles, wearing a blindfold and gag is Dominic. <laughs> Hanging around his neck is a sign that simply says, Kiss me, I'm Irish. <laughs> How did you manage to tie him up? <gasps> I'm surprised to see him trussed up so badly. No, no, this is perfect, see? This way he has plausible deniability if anyone finds out about the party. Not his fault, he was tied up. By desperados. <laughs> everyone laughs at that. Well, everyone except Dominic. Enough of this small talk. Tonight we toast the luck of the Irish. Wait, which one of us is Irish? Quiet, you. First, pin the shamrock on the leprechaun. Okay. The alcohol starts flowing early and freely. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm like choking on stuff for some reason. <clears throat> there we go. I try to take it easy so I'm not totally smashed too soon. Just having little sips of whatever mega booze Isabella created is honestly keeping me in a consistent buzz. Luckily, Isabella's games begin to take progressively less skill. And progressively more drinking. <laughs> We play a bunch of different silly party games with drunken penalties. Isabella even got her hands on a snake-shaped piñata. When we finally managed to drunkenly beat it open, it was full of jello shots in little plastic cups. Turns out Rakesh had actually made it special. Finally, after a while, we're all sitting on the floor around the study nook. Dominic continued struggling to get out of his bindings as we started playing a simple game of truth or dare. Okay, I choose Sally. Okay! Dare! Uh oh You should... Let out the loudest belch you can. What? That's gross, Rakesh! Too bad you have chosen to be daring. Sally takes a drink of the punch, weaving in place a little, before taking a deep breath. And letting out the smallest perp any of us have heard. <laughs> Everyone laughs as Sally turns bright red. I can't just burp on command! Shut up! Whatever, it's my turn now, so shut up! <laughs> Sally turns toward me with a wicked look in her eyes. Okay, Anne. Truth or dare? I don't want to either. Um. I don't know. Dare? Just... Nothing too bad, okay? Oh, that just means it's going to be extra bad. All right. I know. I dare you to give Dominic a big old kiss. Poor thing's been tied up all night. I can't believe she asked that. 
I can feel myself blushing, but... For the first time in the last hour, Dominic has stopped trying to get free. I grin a little bit, realizing he's looking forward to it. I walk over to Dominic and sit on his lap before lowering his gag. Finally, I lean in to give him a big, long kiss on the lips. The others cheer appreciatively, and I can see Dominic smile. As I get up, he just whispers, Worth it. I try not to laugh as I raise the gag and sit back down in my spot. All right, nice one, Anne. Your turn now. Finally. Okay, I choose Isabella. We continue around the circle like that for another few hours. In the morning, I wake up in my own bed, feeling like death is trying out a new drum solo behind my sinuses. I can only vaguely remember making my way back upstairs, but everything feels fuzzy. I head downstairs towards the kitchen for a bit of water, only to find everyone else standing at the bottom of the stairs. I go down to them and look in the same direction, and my jaw hits the floor. Please tell me you didn't leave Dominic there all night. Don't tell me. We never... Mm-hmm. Sitting in a chair on the study, silently fuming, Dominic waits to be untied. Not it! <laughs> Luckily, when it was all over, Rakesh lost the rock-paper-scissors contest. The rest of us were well on our way to Isabella's cafe for some morning coffee before Dominic finally got set free. Sorry, Dominic. Whoops. Another event. Yes, that's why I need your help, Anne. I cannot paint all these flowers by myself in one night. I already told you I have plans for tonight, though, right? I'd have to skip out on Roxanne. You probably shouldn't be painting those flowers at all, you know. They're in a park, Rakesh. Isn't that illegal? You're painting the roses red. I am nearly positive that it would be viewed as a public service. Unfortunately, I really do have to meet with Roxanne tonight. We have to put the last touches on our final essay soon. Huh. Rakesh puts on a small domino mask. Well, I suppose it cannot be helped then. <clears throat> that boy is going to get in some serious trouble. Still, I don't know if it's worth missing tonight's session with Roxanne. Yeah, sorry, Rakesh. Not this time. <coughs> Excuse me. I just can't let him go out there on his own. What? Is that... Am I... I wanted to skip this. Do I play to go to see Roxanne? Please don't get arrested. Okay, apparently. That was really confusing. I have to put Rakesh out of my head for now. Roxanne is coming over. Oh, again. I look over my notes for my half of our final essay. I think I've got things organized pretty well. I just really hope Roxanne hasn't already gone to the professor behind my back. We haven't really met as often as we'd initially planned. I set out a few last minute replacements as I wait for Roxanne to show up. She's not due for another few minutes, so I set up my notes and try to see if my position is sound. Oh, hey, is that for Task's class? Roxanne coming over tonight? Whoa! <laughs> Wah! I try not to leap out of my chair. Max! I didn't hear you coming. Sorry, no biggie, was just curious. No need to get freaked out. No, I mean, yes, I mean... No, I'm not freaked out. Yes, Roxanne is coming over tonight. Sheesh. Ha, ah, you're cute when you're flustered. Pfft. I roll my eyes at Max, who just shrugs with a groofy, a, a groofy, groofy grin on his face. Suddenly, Max's expression turns contemplative. Hey, Anne, just curious. Why did you choose Roxanne over me? I mean, I know I'm not the greatest student or whatever, but I could have helped a little, right? I know you said all that stuff about me bugging you all the time, but I almost never bug you these days. Hardly ever. Rarely. Okay, less than constantly, but that's something, right? He gives me an endearingly sheepish grin, and I'm just not sure what to say. Oh, Max, I just... I mean... I just... I didn't think I could trust myself around you. Uh... I... Hmm. Well, 
actually that's the closest to the truth because I'm on Dominic's route, so I didn't want to do your route. I think. I avoid making eye contact for a few moments, but I can't avoid him forever. Look, here's the thing, Max. You're a really fun guy, and normally that's great, but... Um... At the time, I just knew this would be serious. I mean, it turned out to be incredibly serious, but... Anyway, I knew that if I picked you, I'd have been distracted having fun with you. And I just didn't want to take that chance. Max looks at me with that twinkle he gets when he's being smug. Look, I know I'm irresistible to the ladies, but I also know when it's time to get serious. Still, I guess I can see your logic. I guess I'm not the most on-track guy around. Mm-hmm. Oh, hello. If you ask me, Anne simply made the most logical choice for clear success. I wheel my head around to see Sally standing next to Ro Roxanne with a sheepish look on her face. I ran into her outside on my way in. She said she had business, so... Yes, we do have business. Which we should be getting to. Eh, I shrug at Max and go over to welcome Roxanne. When I look back over, I see Max and Sally heading upstairs with Vegemite. I thought pets weren't allowed at the dorms. Oh, we're just house-sitting for a day or two. Everyone's excited. She makes sure to shoot a disapproving glare at Max before accepting my greeting. Seems like there's some weird antagonism there. I'm not sure if she heard what we were saying. Her expression is as sour as ever. Finally, with all the distracting people out of the way, it's time for Roxanne and I to get down to business. Right. Well, we didn't get any points with Max, but oh well. That's the end of our week, I guess. So, we'll call it there, I guess, for now.